What if Hubble was right? What if galaxies are not receding? What if the universe has no beginning? It's eternal. My name is Sahil Gupta, and I'm here to fix a problem at the root. What exactly did Hubble measure at Mount Wilson Observatory? He measured the redshift of light from galaxies beyond the Milky Way. Let me show you. When he looked up at the night sky, he saw light from stars from other galaxies. He measured their distance and he measured the redshift. And to introduce a measurement free from bias and free from interpretation, I'm gonna use percent energy loss. And this is what he saw. The farther a galaxy is, the more energy its photons lose while traveling. The scientific establishment thinks that the reason for the redshift is that galaxies are receding. But this leads to requirements that some galaxies are receding at 90% the speed of light. This leads to requirements that space expanded faster than the speed of light. And this view is unable to explain structures that we see that are older than 13.8 billion years, the slope of this trend line. So what if the mechanism for the redshift is not galactic recession, but photon hubbling? I'll return to this thought. But how did I get here? I started looking at the SI unit system, the meter, the kilogram, the second, and how they're defined, and how they're defined in terms of the speed of light, and how they're defined in terms of Planck's constant. And I found a coincidence. Let me show you. Planck's constant, the ratio of the energy of a photon to its frequency, equals the mass of a proton times the radius of a proton, as experimentally measured, times the speed of light, times tau over 4, tau also known as 2 pi. Now a coincidence is not hard science, but when the precision is 0.01%, when the units match up, and when each of the terms is physically meaningful at the scale of the phenomena, one should ask why. So now that I knew this, I thought about plugging it in to Dirac's large numbers hypothesis. And I found this. This is the proton charge radius, as found here. This is the radius of a proton mass black hole. 
this is the radius of the observable universe or a rate of continuous photon decay, and this is the radius of an electron mass photon. Now again, a coincidence is not hard science, but when the precision is there and when the terms are meaningful and when there's symmetry and when the terms represent extremes, I think one should ask why. So the symmetry here, which is really incredible, is a measure of charge, the strength of charge for a proton mass, the strength of gravity for a proton mass at an extreme, the longest radius cosmically interesting, that's cosmically interesting, and the shortest radius of a photon, of an electron mass photon. And this coincidence includes all the fundamental constants in a way that's symmetric and meaningful. Hubble's constant, this is one over Hubble's constant and this is one over the fine structure constant, is the famous 13.8 billion years. And then I thought, what would be the consequences of something like this, if it's true? What if all the constants in this equation are constants? What if Hubble's constant is constant too? What if 13.8 billion years is a constant? What if 13.8 billion years is not the age of the universe, but just a measure of photon energy loss? What if the universe doesn't have an age? What if the universe is eternal? No beginning, no ending just an eternal, eternally evolving present. What if galaxies are not receding from the Milky Way? What if space is not expanding? What if there's no heat death of the universe? What if the cosmic temperature of 2.7 Kelvin exists by the mechanisms as proposed, as proposed before Penzias and Wilson? What if galaxies have life cycles? And what if matter and energy continue recirculating eternally? And what if our own individual actions have effects in the big circus?